Welcome back to the GSMC Hockey Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're in our second segment of the night talking about NHL trade rumors from the weekend. What has, uh, you know, uh, come to life after uh, a couple of days where things were kind of flying out of nowhere. The biggest one that did happen today. Let me actually make sure I get all the pieces right in this trade here. Give me one second, actually. It is Linus Olmark being traded to the Ottawa Senators, uh, the team that we know that we knew was definitely going to be uh going to be a suitor for uh a goaltender here. Uh and for the Boston Bruins in their their official announcement, what they got back for Linus Olmark, a former Vesna winning goaltender, Jonas Corposalo, who was statistically the worst goaltender in the NHL this past season. The 25th overall pick in this future draft, I believe if we are going through my mock draft, that would be somewhere around Liam Greentree, maybe. Uh, actually, now I'm curious, where who would be 25th overall in my, in my mock draft that I did? Um, it would be, once I get there, uh, 25th overall was uh, Lushenko, which is a, a Jet Lushenko is a very good prospect, so that's actually not too bad. Um, I do like Jet Lushenko a lot, uh, but you're getting some guy around there, someone like that. Of course, my mock draft isn't going to be 100% correct. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And you're also getting a forward named Ma- Mark Castellic in addition to all of that. You're also getting Jonas Corposalo at 25% retained, who Jonas Corposalo is one of the worst contracts in the NHL, uh, to be quite frank. So, honestly, I've seen a lot of uh, Boston fans mad about this one. Of course, you're losing your Vezina goaltender. Uh, you don't really have too much of a... You don't have too much of a say in what, as I'm speaking this, of course, I'm also keeping an eye out on the Florida Panthers Oilers game. The Panthers just take a lead in this game. It is now 2-1 to one in the Stanley Cup Final Game 7 with... Five minutes left in this second period. The Panthers are able to take the lead in that game. Uh, it is a goal from Sam Reinhardt. Of course, the assists haven't come in yet, but that could be a very influential goal. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Uh, Sam Reinhardt makes it 2-1. to one. That could be a very influential goal in, in this Stanley Cup Final with only 25 minutes left to play in this in this entire season, the Florida Panthers do take a lead here. Uh, but as I was saying, <clears throat> for uh, Linus Olmark, we knew that they weren't going to get back what they really wanted. Like, they, they weren't going to get a package back for this guy. He, he's made it clear that, or you made it clear that you're trading him. So now it's just the best bidder. And everybody, and and truly, it was only a handful of teams that were really looking for a goaltender the devils already got there and with the marshram return that they got or, or with what they had to give up for marshram it didn't it didn't seem didn't seem like goalies were that too valued this year is the problem here so this is kind of what happens you end up with a you end up with a return that you're not too happy about but you have jeremy swayman still you have a you're not really worried about your goaltending situation. You're more or less worried about your prospect situation and then your forward situation right now. If you're the Boston Bruins, hopefully for them they can hit on that 25th overall pick. If not, I think this team spirals a little bit in the upcoming years. Does a little bit worse next year. Does a little bit worse the next year, and then it starts to enter a rebuilding or retooling phase. For Linus Olmark, uh, you knew he was going to get traded. He officially does. For the Ottawa Senators, it's a fantastic uh, deal. You got your goaltender who you felt like not having a goaltender this year for the Senators is why they weren't a playoff contender. Honestly, with with that forward core, with uh, the you know the entire team that they have around them, they just needed a goaltender. What they were getting from Anton Forsberg and Jonas Corposalo this year was literally the worst in the NHL. 
and that's what led to them being a below average team. So congratulations for the Senators. They're looking like they'll be in the playoff hunt next year. Moving on now, I heard a lot of noise about Rucker McGordy going somewhere uh, this offseason over the weekend. Of course, he announced that he was going back to Michigan for his third year in collegiate hockey after being drafted in the first round in 2022 by the Winnipeg Jets. Rucker McGordy is a fantastic forward prospect. He's played on Team USA in uh, World Juniors, has played very well in the World Juniors as well. Uh, a good prospect that can definitely uh, be of use for an NHL team. And it kind of left you scratching your head like, why aren't they trusting in Rucker here? Why aren't they taking him into the NHL team? And now I'm hearing that they are trying to get a package for um, – they're, they're using Nikolai Ehlers and Rucker McGordy in a package for somebody – or, or for a higher draft pick, I don't know what they're looking for a return here in Winnipeg, but it you know it does leave me scratching my head a little bit because I feel like Rucker McGordy can definitely produce at the NHL level, and he's under team contract for two more years here. We'll see where he ends up if he does end up getting traded. I believe he absolutely does because he deserves to be playing in the NHL. He's a fantastic forward, as I mentioned, that is looking to you know take that next step. Of course, I don't think he wants to go back to Michigan for a third year in a row. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a fun place to play. You're playing with a lot of talent around you, but I mean, that team was not that great this year. With a lot of fantastic individual pieces, I mean, you have, I mean, what are the individual pieces they had? They had Frank Nazar on their team. They had Gavin Brindley, who was playing fantastic. They had uh, Rucker McGordy. Uh, they had a really good defense on top of all that and a fantastic goaltender on the back end. I only know all this because I wrote for the Ohio State men's ice hockey team and had to watch them destroy the Ohio State men's ice hockey team uh, while I was in the press box for that game. So, uh, they have they had fantastic talent and it's a fun place to play. But when you're NHL ready, you just want to get to the NHL, and it makes sense. Another big name, Brett Pesci, is coming up in a lot of tar- talks. What's going on in Carolina, man? Their entire team wants out. Uh, Martin Ichas is good as gone on that team. Brett Pesci wants to be gone. Tavo Teravainen still. Uh, I'm not hearing anything with contract talks. For him, you have um, you have Jake Gensel, who's a pending UFA, who admitted that he wants to return. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, on the back end, I heard Brady Shea is not returning, uh, which will be a huge loss to their defense a decor. So the Carolina Hurricanes are kind of all over the place right now. And for a team that was, uh, you know, perennial 100 point contender, you're wondering what's going on. Of course, they lost their general manager this off season. He went to take control of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Don Waddell this is. So maybe that adds a little bit to all of this. Uh, Just their new general manager isn't being able to negotiate as well as Don Waddell was able to. But, I mean, this entire team wants out uh, in in Carolina. So um, we'll see what happens with all of that. Of course, you have a fantastic core around Sebastian Ajo, who is a superstar. So Jake Gensel will return, who played fantastic for the Carolina Hurricanes in the last half of the year after they got him for the trade deadline. You still have two fantastic goaltenders in Kachetkov and uh, Freddie Anderson. So we'll see what goes on in Carolina. But right now, it looks like a lot of people went out, and we'll see if they're able to replace them. Uh, Other big uh, rumors that I've heard... Okay, I'm trying to think about how to phrase this. I saw on Twitter today that the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Utah Hockey Club have come to an agreement for a trade with Mitch Marner. However, this could just be a rumor, and it, this isn't this isn't 100% information. It's just a rumor I saw on Twitter from a from a former NHL insider writer. So, I don't know how reputable this is. This could not have happened. However, Mitch Marner, rumored to have to be going to the Utah Hockey Club. And if this is true, that is insane. That is, I, I can't wait to see the return. 
th- that return for a Mitch Marner is is gonna be that's a blockbuster. That truly is a blockbuster trade. Um, you have you're not gonna give up Logan Cooley. You're not gonna give up Clayton Keller in a trade like this. You're not gonna give up. Uh, maybe a Dylan Gunther you're willing to give up for for a Mitch Marner? Maybe. Uh, no, I mean this is this is a blockbuster trade here. Uh, it's gonna have, of course, it probably involves a top round pick here for the Utah Hockey Club if they have actually come to terms for a trade here. But this could be this could be very influential for both teams. Mitch Marner. Of- a hundred point, a hundred point getter. However, playing with the superstars of the Toronto Maple Leafs, so you don't know how much you take that to to account there. And then on the other end, a Toronto Maple Leafs team who believe that they're ready to win now, but just lacking depth pieces. If they're able to get some in this trade back, that team could be very good. So we'll see what the return is. If this is true, of course, it's just a rumor, as I said previously. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. But if Mitch Marner does go to the Utah Hockey Club, that is a crazy big trade in the NHL. So we'll see if that does happen. I saw that if it did happen, it would be announced on the draft floor over on Friday. So we'll see. I'm also hearing a lot of trades can be going down on the draft floor on Friday. I can't wait to talk about all of that. But that'll wrap it up for our second segment on the GSMC Hockey Podcast. When I get back, we'll be talking about Stanley Cup Final, Game 7, talking about the preview, talking about the lines, going into this game, what's been different for both teams. 